Hello everyone, my name is Vivian Torres and with my partner Nelson Febo we're going to be presenting to you After the Storm, where vulnerability is shown and portrayed in Thelia Moss's poem, Tornadoes. Thelia Moss is an American writer and poet who was born on February 27, 1954 in Cleveland, Ohio. She is recognized by many for her several poetry collections in which she speaks about race, gender, and social injustice. In her poem, Tornadoes, Moss reflects about an atmospheric event clamoring about all the greatness they possess. She does this by describing and comparing the tornado with saviors and guardian angels. However, Moss details that with every storm, justice is brought upon those she cannot provide it to, essentially black people. In other terms, with every storm, whether it's a natural event or an internal struggle, balance is restored after its passing and justice is brought upon those who suffer from injustice. However, Tornado can be considered a poem about vulnerability because that is the state in which a humans are left after nature has left an impact with storms or natural catastrophes. But how do we define vulnerability? Well, researchers state that being vulnerable is being prone to danger or easily or can get easily hurt. Thus, a person can be considered vulnerable if, one, they live in poor conditions and develop health issues, which is we can, we can know it as social vulnerability. Two, technology becomes useless and they cannot call for help, which we can call technological vulnerability. Third, when they lose all their possessions, or they lose their jobs, or they lose um, their homes or, or electronic devices, which we can call economical vulnerability. And fourth, when nature is gravely affected due to its own storms, which is called natural vulnerability. And all of these things can happen right after a storm. But the question now is, does Moss tackle this kind of vulnerability? Well, even though in her poem Moss doesn't clearly state that she is tackling the term of vulnerability head on, the reader can infirm that that is what happens when a tornado is developed or travels in a state. A uh, more clear example of how humans are affected by nature, and this poem kind of talks about it, uh, is how they become vulnerable with the passing of Hurricane Maria in September of 2017. Now, in her poem, Moss does talk about tornadoes as wonders, and that is rightly so. Although most of us think of us that tornado bring forth uh, chaos and distraction, there is no denying that they can be beautiful to look at. From thunderstorms far away to tornadoes passing over fields and hurricanes developing in the oceans, uh, there's always a sense of mysticism uh, behind atmospheric events. And all around the world, meteorologists are left in awe uh, of with all of these events. But almost every time that they see them, they start to fear them, and, and again, rightly so, because they understand the danger that comes with every storm and what danger brings upon many people, thus referring to vulnerability. refers to confrontations against external factors and how we are resilient to those effects. In simple terms, it's how we deal with the stress of what has happened, what will happen, what's going on, and how we react to those factors. Factors such as destroyed houses, health problems that just develop out of nowhere, we develop mental illnesses like panic attacks, depression, uh, anxiety, we realize that we just lost our jobs uh, or that our jobs were destroyed, um, that we lack food or, or clean, fresh water, uh, not being able to communicate with our loved ones or call for aid if needed, and most importantly, death. Those factors uh, allow people to suffer more and they bring forth uh, this terrible sensation of helplessness and they are not safe in their own skins. They're not safe with their environment and they're not safe among other people. 
seen that video clip about Hurricane Maria back in September of 2017, I know that most of us were feeling a little bit anxious and sad with what was going on. Although the nature and the magnitude of the event was extremely phenomenal, phenomenal and rare, it's really hard not to feel this desperation growing inside of you during those times where you couldn't really do much other than just stand back and watch. This is where social vulnerability comes. Now, when we talk about technological vulnerability, it mainly refers to the failure of technology due to outside forces. This means that anything that requires electricity or electrical current power uh, or internet was kind of useless, leading many people to vulnerable states. At the same time, with the lack of power uh, and no phone towers to, to give out signals, many people in the part of the island were stuck in places that they couldn't get out. They couldn't call for help nor understand what was going on. And this made it difficult for us to make any contact with the outside world, basically. And to this day, many parts of the island are still left without any power. At the same time that this technological vulnerability was going on, a lot of things, a lot of technologies, a lot of our all uh, everyday utensils became useless. This includes cell phones, the internet, stoplights, and even hospital machines started to fail because they needed power to work. However, these, there were some technologies that actually became more valuable due to this. And that, that started with generators that worked on gasoline and anything that was operated with batteries. Radios became super important for communications and flashlights became almost vital for all of us. Now, the third factor of vulnerability that we were able to see was the economical side of vulnerability. And this means that how resilient were we uh, in, those, in those shops that were destroyed or were harmed during Hurricane Maria's passing. Uh, this includes almost the same factors as social vulnerability with the lack of their jobs, with the loss of their, of their, um, of their own products and stuff like that. And not being able to pay for gasoline made it more difficult for economical resilience for them to uh, withstand what was going on. And sometimes losing your job or your personal, your personal spot to relax and to unwind and to make your own income becomes a very huge aspect in economical vulnerability because you feel the same things as social vulnerability. Nature's vulnerability is caught like this only by human's perspective of destruction. Though nature is not being vulnerable at all, it is renewing and cleaning itself to become stronger with time. A cycle called ecological secession makes this happen, where secondary secession takes place when soil is existent. Some non-vascular plants and some pioneer species help the land flourish with time. Dualism in the resources of nature are expressed in the poem in natural disasters such as the Hurricane Maria, where water can be a key element for this, that although it can be beneficial, it can also mean destruction. Most describes the dualism between two elements in her animation towards tornadoes, whether she explains that they are marvelous to sight, but one cannot deny the destruction that they can make. These con contradictory ideas between two elements are just some of the reasons why nature is so beautiful. The positive and negative effects that an element can determine in the human survival towards a catastrophe, and therefore it limits the vulnerability of humans toward the determination of renewing itself and becoming stronger. Beyond Vulnerability, the truth about man and nature. In conclusion, we should learn more about nature's ability to become stronger, preparing ourselves for these natural events. Sometimes to restart, we need destruction and able to succeed. Although being vulnerable in many states and factors, the first times, we can take it as experiences to become stronger the second.